Well, happy days, my fantastic artistic friends. It's absolutely freezing here in the uh, in the uh, master's house, but we're going to do a big painting anyway. It's Sunday morning. Let's chill out. Let's throw some oil paints at a canvas and see what we get. Now, up on here on this big old canvas, it, I've split it basically in two, but I've got a big wobbly, like a U shape, really. And uh, this this dry prime canvas, I, I, I coated this bottom part, if you can see, with with black acrylic primer and just allowed that to dry completely. Once that's dried, we mounted it on this easel and then at the top part, we've coated it in liquid white. On the bottom part, I've coated it in, in liquid clear and Prussian blue, a very dark, you know, vibrant, moody blue. And we're gonna do a waterfall and a mountain and, and some favorites along the way. So let's grab a little paintbrush and, and with that, I'm gonna use not many colors today, just just a few, just a, a bit of crimson. What I've got, just a little bit of a lizard crimson. And I'm just gonna go above this, this area here and just put a little pinkish glow. I just want a little glow just above, just here. And if we hit into the, uh, into the blue, that's on the, uh, where this waterfall's gonna cascade over. That's all right, we'll get a bit of a purpley, purpley glow. In there as well but we just want a little tiny touch there as well looks like I picked up a little bit of yellow as well on the brush but that happens accidentally happens but we don't mind that doesn't matter at all okay just a little bit of a purpley crimsony pinky glow just up there and as we run off for paint we'll add a little bit more just a tiny bit more maybe just in there if all goes well our mountain will sit in this pinkish haze and uh, <laughs> and have a nice time i suppose watching over this waterfall okay bring it right down to the top of the the waterfall wow it's cold super cold it's been snowing it's been blowing gales we've had storm eunice and uh, yeah, it's not been a not been a nice, pleasant time. Scrape that little air off. We get a little air every now and again. That's okay. And that's that. Okay. Right. Just knock off most of the excess paint. Now I'm going to go back in with this paintbrush. Not cleaning it. We're going to go into some Prussian blue. Just there. Just tap a nice, even coating of Prussian blue. Much more stronger and. And, and, and like I said, moodier than the than the thalo blue and the ultramarines that I use. And I'm just going to swoosh in a little sky just at the top. And of course, it's going to mix with a liquid white that's on there. So it'll progressively get lighter as we've come towards the horizon. And as we get less paint on the paintbrush. There we go. Leave some light spots as well. When we come back and blend all this those will give little variants in your sky so it's not just a dead old flat one color one color sky there we go now you could do this without the pinkish glow down at the base it's up to you completely and utterly up to you when you guys paint i just like to add a little bit of warmth in the middle of the painting just to just to draw your eye there and that's about it right to that pinkish glow and we can stop and like i say we're going to have some sort of mountain there. i don't know what kind of mountain you know any kind of mountain really might, might since it's cold we might, and it's snowing we might put a bit of snow a snow covered mountain they seem to be quite popular so we might go for that oh it might change his mind we don't know we don't know okay just there like that again without cleaning the brush thoroughly we're just going to hit a tiny bit of the midnight black just a tiny bit and we're going to really grey these corners up. And again, that will draw your eye into the middle of the painting. And that's where we want it to be. That's where you want your eye to go. On a bit of a ride. There. Right. Set that brush down. I'm going to take a big brush. Okay. And I'm going to start here. It's clean and dry, this brush. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the whole thing, the whole sky, 
And because the liquid white's there, it will allow us to merge these colours together. Just like that. And you can start to see all the, uh, the variants in the sky where we put a little bit more paint, missed a bit, the black paint up there as well. Of course, it doesn't stay black, it'll go grey, a bluey grey colour. And just like that, we have got a nice, fantastic, warm looking sky all the way down there, like so. And I think that will do us for a sky now. Sometimes we had clouds, sometimes we don't. Today, we're not had, we'll not add any clouds, we'll just leave it as it is. Okay, I'm going to take the palette knife. Let's go into that black paint and to that black, maybe a little bit of blue as well. Black and blue, maybe a touch of Van Dyke brown in there. Maybe, since we've got purple in the base of the sky, might add a bit of purple in that as well. Okay, let's, let's start. So cut off that little roll of paint, just lives right there on the edge of the palette knife. And where do we want as mountain to be? Well, I'm gonna put peak number one. We'll have a couple of peaks in this, so we'll put peak number one just there like so and just really pushing and scraping that mountainy shape okay and then maybe a peak number two don't have them all the same shape either when mountains are formed or so i'm told it's when the you know the, <laughs> the tectonic plates are crashing together and it pushes up all the stones from the earth and, 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 and just imagine shh, just imagine that there maybe another one just there like that and then feather that off so that is a pretty large mountain already okay now get in there and scrape all the excess paint off scrape it all off Really get in there, get tough, get tough, get tough. Okay, wipe the palette knife off on a paper towel. Right, so with the brush, I'm just taking this brush that we painted the sky with, and I'm just gonna pull, pull this paint out in the direction we want as mountain to live. Okay, and then maybe a bit this way. And this'll do two things, of course, It'll remove more excess paint. Well, all we're bothered about is that very nice, tidy top line. But it'll remove more excess paint and it'll also allow us to plan out where those mountains are going to be without being 100% committed, if that makes sense. So that can bend and blend out there like so. And you can get shadows and highlights without really even trying. Needs and that edge up there like that and then just feather that down just like that okay there we go there is the under base of our mountain right let me wash that brush off okay so all this paint thinner scrubbed against a little screen shake off the excess and i'm just knocked against the the leg of this this wall mounted easel. I've mounted it on the wall so it's uh, it's always uniform. I know where it is. It's not gonna it's not gonna fall over on me. And everybody that's painted with an easel will know that sometimes these these easels fall over. Right, back to the palette knife, and I'm gonna pull this paint out, white paint, little roll of paint, right on the very edge, and let's start by right. now. I always put my reflections, my light coming from this side. So I think that's what we'll, we'll continue to do. It's easier for me, especially when I'm uh, filming a, a painting like this. So we'll just put a couple of reflections there. Sorry, a couple of uh, snow covered peaks here. And just really gently touch, hardly any effort, hardly any effort. Just blend that down there like that. You don't want much pressure at all, hardly any pressure. The only thing that's touching the canvas is that little tiny roll of paint on your palette knife there. So 
grooves like that. And you want the paint that you're painting with to be quite thick and firm so it, it does break as you're pulling it down the mountain side. Like that. Yes. A bit more up there. Like that way. Of course, this will be quite thick paint. And when it dries, it will be quite thick as well. Quite, quite, you know, you can feel it a bit like 3D. Okay, a bit more on this peak. Down there like that. All the way down. Just like so. Okay, let's make a shadow colour. So I'm going to take some... In fact, I'm going to take some French Ultramarine. Let's get a bit of a different blue going. French Ultramarine and a bit of white mixed together. So we've got a nice baby blue, a pale blue. Okay. And then let's sneak in here and let's work on some shadows. And we're going in the opposite direction to his highlights. And every highlight will need a shadow. Like that. And don't worry too much if you uh, if you mess your, your white edge up. Because we can always come back in and just tinker. Tinker with it. There. And a bit more on this one, this big old one. There. There it comes. A bit down there, like so. Nice big cool looking mountain See that goes in there wherever we think these mountains live that's exactly where we should put them right and then a bit more down there let's zoom that off it's almost that cold i'm shivering <laughs> i think i better put a big coat on to, to carry on painting this yeah, I'll blend that out. There, like so. Right, wipe the old palette knife off. Make sure it is clean, because we're going to go back into some more white paint and just reaffirm some of these these edges. So this edge here, we can bring that down and across and down like that. And again on this one, uh, 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 let's put a little snow cap up there down there so it's not just one continuously straight line see if they're jagged up they're going to be jagged to the sides as well that's right and then down there in fact we could fetch that right the way out right the way in front of all this there. a bit more paint pull just no no pressure at all no pressure at all. Let the palette knife do the work for you. There, like so. So we've got a big old mountain living up there. Right. This brush, nice and clean. I've just tapped a little tiny bit of white. And what I'm going to do is just tap the base where this pinkish glow is. And I'm just going to tap this. So I'm going to mist all this area up. So it looks like the mountain will be sitting in some, some fog and some mist. That's right, just tap it there. And of course some of this pinky colour will show through. And again on this side, we'll go on this way, follow the direction. You can hear how hard I'm tapping. Follow the direction of the, uh, of the mountain, just there. Gently go up, tease it up, tease it up there like that. There. Now, if we want to fetch some more of this snow on this mountain down in front of this one, we can just, just do that. There, like that. And that kind of forces that one back a little bit, doesn't it? Maybe it comes down a little bit more there. Whoa. That mountain is growing on us. <laughs> okay, just a little bit of a tap there. And 
that pinky colour will show through and then just gently lift up, take out the tap marks. Let's put a little bit of a shadow on this side as well. Don't want this little bit of an area of a mountain being left out. So I've just added a tiny bit more blue to the shadow mixture. Squeeze that in, squeeze that in there, and again just tap. It doesn't matter if we go into the black part of the canvas, and then blend that out. Blend, blend, and blend, just very gently. Have a nice time doing this. There we go. And already with just the tap marks, it looks like we've got little trees. A little forest living at the base of this this big heavy mountain is it's a huge one isn't it i don't think the snow has fully set on that mountain right shake off the excess beat it up again all right now let's work on this big waterfall let's work on it so i'm going to take a big fan brush and i'm going to tap in some liquid white into this fan brush, liquid white, and then just pure titanium white, liquid white, just to thin it down slightly. In fact, I'm gonna add a little touch of liquid clear to that as well. Liquid clear will give a nice, um, like a, a glossy effect to the, uh, to the water as it cascades over. Now we're gonna need something to hold the waterfall up, so either, either side of this, we'll put some stones and we'll have some stones down in the bottom, but I think if we come along in here and we'll just use that guideline that we created that and then we'll just pull that over like so all the way over plenty of paint on let's get a bit more paint there we go all the way over Again on this one, and just pull across and straight down, down and down, just like that, straight down, parallel to the sides of your canvas. Lots of paint. This is a number ten fan brush. <laughs> Didn't realise it was that big when I picked it up. Okay, and then across and down again. straight down yeah. maybe it's melt maybe maybe the snow is starting to melt I don't know yeah. all the way down we may put a rock in the middle I do love waterfalls I love mountains and I love waterfalls I love flowing water. It's such a joy to, to be around and, and, and paint. It's a great subject matter. There we go. So we've got, I like to put a little stone in the middle of the waterfall where the old kingfisher will live, you know, and sees a little trout or anything and jumps and <laughs> tries to catch it. Okay, so let's neaten some of these up a little bit. Just there, like that. Flowing water. Like that. Okay, so that's simple and that's straightforward. We've basically got some fast flowing water. Okay, don't worry too much about the edges. Like I said, we're going to come back, neaten it all up, put a few big stones in that's going to keep this waterfall, stop, stop it from falling off the end of the, the canvas. Right, let me put that down. Let me put you down there. All right, let's work on a little stone in the middle, just like we made the big mountain. We'll do the same for the little one. So but I'm going to take the little edge of the knife. This is a little knife. And I'm just going to just scrub in a little stone there. I am quite fond of little stones in the middle of waterfalls. I don't know why, but all I'm doing, 
put one in there there like that okay try and scrape off some excess paint if you can you could have done this with a paintbrush could have even done it with your finger i suppose okay a little bit of white paint in fact i'm going to take a tiny touch of burnt sienna i'll give it a brownie to a tone to that as well and and then just there and there just a little bit of an highlight maybe a bit more up there down there like so and then back into that shadow color that's the blue colors of course, we want the shadows on the same side as this mountain. There we go. Yeah, like that. And then maybe a little bit more. I like just to zing that off a bit there. And again, these <laughs> these stones in the middle of the stream, they, they grow any old way as well. Okay, wipe that knife off back to the paint. The fan brush that's got the white paint on and you can come back in here and just really neaten that up go intentionally over the stone and it'll push the stone into the painting there like so all right now we've got something okay let's work on these big edges all right so i'm going to take <laughs> when my arms warm back up um, let's make a grey colour. So let's take that original mountain colour. Okay, I'm going to take some white. I may add a touch of burnt sienna to that, just to brown it off a bit, make it look like a stone. And don't over mix your paint. I don't know if you can see that, but it's all different colours there. I don't know if you can see me either. <laughs> but it's all different colours. And that's what we're after and again just scrape off that little roller paint and i'm just going to come up here and i'm just going to above the waterfall and then just gently come down and let's just start to dance the knife about and let's create all kinds of stone faces like a big cliff face that lives just there and of course with the variance of colours that we've got that will make it a bit bigger uh, there big strong cliff face yeah. just like that a bit more in there as well there pull that down and again a bit more here and down there and across that we'll have that down there like so easy peasy when you know the palette knife is playing with you today easy peasy i could just put some in there same on the other side now excuse me i'm gonna have to reach across let's get some more white paint in that a bit more brown Again, not over don't over mix your paint and again I'm going to come across there and just gently push in maybe this has got a ledge that sticks out there and comes back on itself yeah look at all those different colors you could not mix those in a million years if you tried Again, it's going to be quite thick as well, this paint. Quite tactile painting when when finished. We'll go there. Maybe a little ledge comes out at the bottom. We're going to come back and put some, some, uh, some splashes in. Waterfall in this far, there's going to be a lot of crashing splashes. Trust me. Okay, so let's do it. Let's put some crashing, splashing bits and pieces in. Oh, honestly, I can't feel my fingers. <laughs> Dan, you need to get uh, you need to get a quieter heater. I have to turn the heater off when I press record. You see, oh, you won't hear me speaking. But that's not good, is it? Oh, maybe it is. 
Maybe it is. I don't know. Right, so rounded brush. Okay. Titanium white paint. And all I'm doing at the bottom of this is keep loading your brush. We want some really nice, splashy, foamy things up down here. Go over your rocks at either side. Again, up there as well. It's falling from a great height. You see this water. Just keep reloading your brush so you don't pick up too much of the blue paint that's already on there. And if you don't pick up blue paint, it's okay, isn't it? Okay, just go up there, down there like so. Maybe this is really crashing up. There, into that corner there. A bit more down there like so. Big old, big old waterfall. Now I live near the Yorkshire Dales where we've got plenty of waterfalls like this. Not many mountains that look like this. They're all green covered moors or purple moors, but uh, we do have big crashing waterfalls that are like this. Very, very loud as well. And I can't wait while the sun starts to show and I can get back up there and do some walking and maybe even, maybe even take some photos, maybe even take the easel. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Right. White paint, just white paint. Again, we've got blue down here. So all I'm going to do on the fan brush is just side to side. Now, you don't have to be overly straight with this because this is going to be water that's going to be churning, okay, and splashing about. But we're just going to go side to side, all the way off the canvas, right down there. That's it. And then just gently bring that together. Paint the bottom of the easel like I always do. When this happens, when you paint your, your bars that hold your, hold your um, canvas in place, at the end of every painting, just take a little bit of paint cleaner, you know, uh, paint thinner on a tissue and just wipe them clean. Or you can end up doing what I always do and end up bringing that mucky paint off your easel onto your new fresh canvas. There. I always do that. Keep forgetting to, keep forgetting to clean the easel. It's an important tool. Without an easel, we won't have a painting. Okay. Right down. There we go. Maybe a bit more down this side. Maybe even just splashing up. Like that. Maybe this splashes this way. There, like so. And then just gently across. Put some splashes down there. Just like that. Last thing to do, well, a couple more things. I'm just going to highlight a couple of these stones. So I'll take the palette knife. I'm going to make a nice, get a bit of blue in there. White, not much paint. And again, I'm just going to come up here, just like we did on the mountain. And just, just a little tiny. There we go. Down here. Maybe there, like so. Big old rock face. Really pick out those colours. Really pick them out. And then same on the other side. Just gently come across. Down like that. Just let the paint take what it needs. Let the painting take what it needs. And leave you with the rest to carry on for another day. There we go. And down there. And there we've got it. And you can actually put some grasses on top of here. If you wanted a bit of scale, you could put a tree up there perhaps. Or um, whatever. Whatever. This is completely and utter, utterly up to you. There we go, right. Clean that knife off again. And I'm going to cut in some water lines. Just there, just around the feet of these big old rocks. Same on this one. Just neating it all up. Neating it all up. Maybe cut in some here as well. Here, there, and everywhere. Make it look like turbulent water. 
I'm going to sign this one now. So I'm going to dip into some paint thinner, get a little rigger brush, paint thinner, bright red paint, initial it down here. I will sign the back. And I was going to sign this one just on the rock, just there. So if you've enjoyed this one, my fantastic friends, if you've joined, maybe, oh, sorry, if you've stayed with me this long <laughs> in this freezing temperature, I do applaud you. Right, I, I'm going to go get warm now, but uh, please give me a big thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And leave me a comment, you know. I always love reading what you've, uh, you guys have got to put. And if you give it a go, my links to the socials are in the, the description. I can see I can't breathe. It's that cold. Right, um, but yeah, until next time, take care of yourself. Stay safe. Happy days.